we're going to be looking at one way ANOVA and we're going to be using the data set from example 8.3.1 to carry out the exercise. So before we actually do that let's have a quick review of one way ANOVA and to help me do that I'm going to form an individual value plot. So I'm just going to bring up Minitab and as you can see I've already got the data for 8.3.1 downloaded from rmk6sigma.com there's five columns of data with about from 24 to 26 data elements in each column. Okay, so let's form that individual value plot. I'm going to click on graph, individual value plots. I want to select multiple Y's, simple. Then I'm going to click OK. Now, as you can see, I've already made the graph once before and I've already got materials A to E selected. So just to show you how that's done, I'm just going to clear the menu by pressing F3. Now that I've cleared the menu, this is how I'd normally start. I would select materials A to E all together, click on select, then click OK to form the graph. Right, so what we're looking at here is one factor which is called material, shown on the X axis, and we have five different levels of material. So we've got material A, B, C, D and E, five different levels of one factor called material. Now A could be steel, B could be paper, C could be wood, and D could be plastic, and E could be a ceramic. It doesn't matter as long as they're all linked to the factor. And in this case, for each of our materials, we have the same continuous response data. So for the same test, we've got how they've responded. So material A, um, we have 25 different breaking strengths for material A and they're all the values of breaking strength are shown on the y-axis as a common axis for all of our five different levels. Now when we use one way ANOVA what we're asking is do the populations that these samples come from have differing means and all we're looking for is one pair of populations to be different and that will signify a significant test in one way and over. We then use graphical methods, methods or grouping information tables to tell us which pair were actually different or which groups are different and I'll show you that when we do the example. Let's now have a look at the prerequisites for the one way and over test. Okay, so if we have nine levels of one factor then we need at least 15 data points uh, at each level for the normality uh, of the population that the samples were drawn from not to be an issue and if there are 10 or more levels then we need 20 samples at each level. Okay, We may need more samples if our power is insufficient i.e. less than 80% and it also depends on obviously the minimum difference we wish to detect. The data must be continuous data which is time ordered and from unimodal distributions and as before the data must be stable. Unlike the classic method, the method used in the assistant which we're going to be using does not require that the groups have equal variances. OK, let's have a look at our test scenario then. So this is example 8.3.1 material breaking strengths. Z is checking the breaking strength of five materials in a standardized test. Z does around 25 cents tests on each of his materials and reports the breaking strengths in time order. Can you help Z establish if any of the materials have different breaking strengths? Can the materials be categorized into groups? For the power and sample size calculation Z feels 4 is the minim minimum difference that he would wish to detect between groups. OK let's go back into Minitab now that we know the scenario and run the test. So I always like to go back to the project window for whatever reason before I start the tests. So I've just did that. So I'm going to click on Assistant, Hypothesis Tests, and then from the Compare More Than Two Samples group, I'm going to select the One Way ANOVA test. OK, so now my Y data for each X values are in separate columns. That's true, I just need to select my columns now as we did before. Select A to E click on select. My alpha level is already set at 0 0.05 and the difference that Z stated in the scenario that he wanted to be able to detect down to was a difference of 4. So click on 4 and then click OK to execute the test. 
and Minitab gives us a four page report that we're now going to go through one at page at a time starting off with the summary report. On the top left of the summary report we are asked the question do the means differ and we get the answer back yes. So we can reject our null hypothesis we know that at least one pair of the means do differ. Okay, so to get more information we can have a look at our means comparison chart and our grouping information table. Let's have a look at the means comparison chart first. Okay, the first thing that you'll notice is it's quite a lot like the individual value plot we plotted before but some things have been changed. The materials are now on the y-axis and the continuous response variable is now on the x-axis. The other thing to notice is that the order of the levels has been changed. It goes material A, B, E, C, D. Okay, and then what we also need to know is that it says underneath the title mean comparison chart red intervals that do not overlap differ. Okay, so they are all red. What does that mean? Well, that means if an interval is red, it differs with at least one other confidence interval. So these are the 95% confidence intervals for the population means. So material A differs with at least one other confidence interval. And to interpret how they differ, we use the grouping information table. So we get our list of materials there in the same order uh, as in the graph and they are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So material A is number 1 and we're told that material A differs from 4 and 5. So it doesn't differ from 2 and 3 so we can think of these as being the same and they differ from 4 and 5. Now material 4 which is C differs from 1, 2 and 3 and it differs from material 5. Material 5 which is D right at the bottom there differs from 1, 2 and 3 and material C. So now we can see which pairs of materials are different. Now that would have taken a, taken a lot of time if we had done that using uh, two sample t-tests and done all the pairwise comparisons. So ANOVA, one way ANOVA has done that for us in one go. So let's have a look at the next page of the report now which is the diagnostic report. So on the diagnostic report we have a histogram for each group and then because the data was recorded in time order we have a control chart for each of the material levels and what we're looking for is unusual data points which are marked in red luckily for us there aren't any and we can also look for bimodal distributions and there doesn't seem to be a consistent change in level indicating that the samples have been taken from two different populations either and on the histograms we can see clearly there are no bimodal distributions and the actual histograms are there so we can compare location and spread. Okay so we can be quite confident our test is quite reliable and next we're going to have a look at the power report. So click on the graph icon again, double click on the next one and then just enlarge the power report. So on the top left we have a confidence interval for our power value. So we are told for this particular test our power was somewhere between 73.98 and 85.66 and on the top right we're then told the number of samples we would have needed in each group to let's say get a, uh, a power above 90% or above 80% but in this case the test found a difference so we don't really have to worry about the power Below that we have a table showing more statistical data giving a sample size, the actual mean of the sample, the standard deviation of the sample and then the values for the 95% confidence interval for the mean for each of those groups. Finally we're going to go to the report card and have a look at that. So this will give us a report on how reliable our test was and we're given three ticks which is great so uh, there were no unusual data points we had a sufficient sample size to detect a difference and there was no issue for normality because we had at least 15 in each of our groups and finally we're given information to say that uh, Minitab's assistant uses Welsh's method so we don't have to worry about equal variance within the groups. So that ladies and gentlemen is how you conduct 
one way and over using the assistant in mini tab 17 so if you liked what you saw please hit subscribe or give us a thumbs up and please take a look at the book where you'll find more information and more details on the theory behind one way and over and more examples and exercises for you to do thank you see you next time Thank you.